It's finally time for the Avengers. But before we get to that, I got a few things to say. All these movies take place in different universes at different times. It gets really confusing, so I'm going to explain it all. Every Marvel movie from the beginning to the year 2000 or so is set in its own universe. None of these movies connect. Then we got the X-Men movies, and these movies are set in their own universe. There's X-Men 1, there's X-Men 2, then there's X-Men 3. Then there's X-Men Origins The Wolverine, which happened before all of the X-Men movies. Then there was X-Men First Class, which takes place before X-Men Origins The Wolverine. Then we have The Wolverine, which takes place after X-Men 3. Then we have X-Men Days of Future Past, which is set after The Wolverine, but then goes back in time to before X-Men Origins Wolverine. And at the end of X-Men Days of Future Past, they change the future. So now X-Men Days of Future Past is gonna go off in a different timeline. And in this timeline, Mystique looks like Jennifer Lawrence instead of looking like Rebecca Remigian. Then there's the Hulk movie, which isn't set in the same universe as the Incredible Hulk movie. The Incredible Hulk movie was a reboot, kind of. They didn't tell the origin story again, but it's still set in a different universe. And that Hulk is the same Hulk that's in the Avengers, even though Edward Norton played the Hulk in that one, and Mark Ruffalo played the Hulk in the Avengers. Then we have Daredevil, which is set in the same universe as Elektra, but Daredevil never shows up in Elektra. Then we have the Spider-Man movies. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man 3 are set in the same universe. But then they rebooted the Spider-Man series, and we have The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which are set in their own universe. And Sony owns Spider-Man, so you're never gonna see Spider-Man meet the Avengers. They're set in different universes. And no, the Spider-Man movies aren't set in the same universe as the X-Men movies. Just because you saw a commercial for an X-Men movie in the credits of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 does not mean they're set in the same universe. That was a commercial for X-Men Days of Future Past at the end of Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So there's the 20th Century Fox. Fox universe of Marvel movies, which includes the X-Men. Then we have the Sony series of movies, which includes Spider-Man. And then we have Marvel Studios, which includes all the Avengers movies and Punisher Warzone and Ghost Rider. But Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance and Punisher Warzone are not in the same universe as the Avengers movies. They are in a different universe called Marvel Knights. In this universe, Marvel is gritty and dark and bloody, I guess. Everybody got that? <laughs> First movie on the list is Iron Man. Holy shit, this movie is really good. The pacing is great. It's really funny. It's really creative. The action is awesome. The special effects are great. It's kind of sad because The Dark Knight came out that year and The Dark Knight obviously was amazing. And everyone paid attention to Dark Knight and kind of forgot about Iron Man. Even though Iron Man is really good. What makes Iron Man stand out and what makes the Iron Man movie so successful is that yeah, Iron Man is cool and all, but Tony Stark is even cooler. And Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of Tony Stark is great. He practically is Tony Stark in real life. This movie also has really great editing. It's not usually something I compliment, but I'm an editor myself, I guess. So I appreciate good editing. In other movies, these scenes would be boring, but because of the editing and the directing, these scenes are so great. In a weaker movie, Terrence Howard would go up to Iron Man and go, you're kind of a, a slacker and you don't pay attention to you to people you love and you you don't you're not responsible and you you are you were kind of a jerk. We would be told how much of a playboy Tony Stark is. But this movie shows us this through visuals and editing. Tony, you know, uh, the best thing about Tony is also the worst thing. He's always working. <laughs> working. Right there, I got it. Not only did you show me how irresponsible Tony Stark is, but you did it in a way that made me laugh. This pretty much delivers on every level. It gave me everything I wanted. And watching the post credit scene was really exciting. I remember back in 2008 when I saw the post credit scene for the first time. And everyone in the theater was like, oh my god, they're gonna make an Avengers movie. And now we finally have one. Is this movie perfect? No. Jeff Bridges all of a sudden builds a giant Iron Man suit. In a few days, he isn't nearly as smart as Tony Stark or as capable but he manages to do it anyway. And then rather than keep the thing under the radar, he starts killing police and federal agents, and he tries to kill Iron Man out in the open in front of everyone. He almost kills a bunch of kids and their mom. Why did he want to do this? You wanted to build an Iron Man suit so you can make money off it, right? Why are you killing people? Why don't you just break into Tony Stark's house and steal all his blueprints? And if they're encoded or something, then just hire a group of hackers to break into his house. 
and steal all the information. Is it because Tony Stark would sue you? Because Tony Stark would sue you for the original Iron Man suit. Because that other Iron Man suit you made is based off the blueprints you stole from the terrorist organization that Tony Stark escaped from. So those are still his designs. He could sue you for that too. Not only that, he could also link you to the terrorists who kidnapped him. Then he leaves incriminating evidence on his computer. Why don't you just delete that shit? You did not tell us that the target you paid us to kill was the great Tony Stark. As you can see, Obadiah Stain, your deception and lies will cost you dear. Why didn't you delete that? This is when the movie starts to fall apart. And it's not because the movie was written by a bunch of hacks. Because this movie, for two thirds of it, is really well written. It's because they have to write in a fight scene at the end. So they write a series of scenes that don't make any sense, just so they can have a bad guy so that Iron Man could fight the bad guy. That's the only reason. That being said, it isn't that big of a deal, because even the weak ending has funny moments, and it's still pretty entertaining. And something else that I really love about it is it avoids cliches. In any other movie, the music would swell, and these two would kiss. But in this movie... Tell me you never think about that night. What night? You know. Are you talking about... The night that we danced and went up on the roof and and then you went downstairs to get me a drink and you left me there by myself. Is that the night you're talking about? Mm hmm Thought so. Will that be all? Yes, Mr. that will be all, Miss Ponson. That's great. If more big summer movies were that self-aware of the formula, then summer movies would be so much better. This movie not only avoids cliches, it makes fun of them. So Iron Man is a really good movie, and it is MUCH better than this piece of shit. The Incredible Hulk is the exact opposite. It's a poorly written, poorly acted piece of garbage. If I'm being honest, I think the old Hulk movie, the 2003 one by Ang Lee, is much better. At least I sat through the whole goddamn thing. That movie was interesting, and it had some cool visuals, and even the bad parts made me laugh. As opposed to this new Hulk movie, which is bland. That is the worst thing a movie can be. Bland. Bruce Banner is such a boring character. Having a nice, shy guy as a main character is BORING! I don't care if it's accurate to your comic books or whatever. Bruce Banner is BORING. He's a cool guy and he helps women and stuff. But sometimes he turns into the Hulk and he loses his temper, but he tries to control it. And he loves this girl Betty. And he wants to protect her, but at the same time, he doesn't want to hurt anybody. Fuck him! Having a character like that is boring. Unless he has someone to play off of. Thor is like that. He is very noble. But when you put him in our society, it's instant comedy. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> Captain America is very much like that. He is the American we all want to be. He's very patriotic. But at the same time, his ideology is very simple. Nazis are the bad guys, Americans are the good guys. So when you put him in the 21st century, where he has to deal with political corruption and the military industrial complex, it's interesting to see how he handles it. Watching Bruce Banner walk around and turn into the Hulk every once in a while is Boring as shit, and the acting is so bad, not because these actors are bad, but because the dialogue is so poorly written. And the music, oh god, the sappiest, most bland, cliche music is used. Then the Hulk comes out, and the Hulk looks terrible, looks like a cartoon. How did the Hulk in 2003 look more realistic than the Hulk in 2008. And Abomination looks terrible too. And the direction and editing is flat. About 25% of this movie is taken up by Bruce Banner on the computer. It's either him on the internet looking up plants and ordering shit, or him talking to some guy on the internet. Why do I want to watch this? Who is entertained by this? I came here to see Hulk. Where is Hulk? And that is where the movie gets kind of good. The end of this movie, even though it doesn't make any sense, is the best part of the movie. Because this is basically all the Hulk is needed for, to fight. Seeing the Hulk fight is cool. Even though it doesn't look real at all, seeing him fight is entertaining, especially because of how brutal it is. They stab each other, they throw cars at each other. He chokes Abomination, like that's awesome. I want to see the Hulk do this. <laughs> Not this.
I was so psyched for this movie. Iron Man 2 was going to be great. I couldn't wait to see it. The whole world couldn't wait to see it. And then we saw it. It's a disappointment, and it's not as good as Iron Man 1. But it also suffers from sequelitis. The problem is, it is way too similar to the first Iron Man. I mean, it's basically the same plot. Tony Stark is kind of an arrogant jerk. He pays for it in some way, and then he has to invent something new, because his life is in danger. While all of that is going on, there are some of uh, rich businessmen who don't know what they're doing, who want to make money off of Tony Stark and the Iron Man suit. So they create some complicated plan to, to take the Iron Man suit from Tony Stark. Then at the end of the day, Tony Stark has to stop him, and it's Iron Man suit versus Iron Man suit. Except this time, there are two Iron Man suits. And this time, there are two villains. The movie also suffers from having too much shit going on. That's kind of the problem with this movie. It's an advertisement for the Avengers, not an Iron Man movie. There's a lot of this movie that doesn't even feature Iron Man. Man. And the best action scene in the whole movie features Black Widow and not Iron Man. Iron Man has some great fight scenes too, but the best one in the movie is the one with Black Widow. I'm not saying these scenes with the Avengers are bad, I'm just saying they don't belong in this movie. I didn't come here to see Nick Fury and Black Widow, I came here to see freaking Iron Man. And as if this whole universe wasn't confusing enough with all its casting changes, now Terrence Howard is replaced by Don Cheadle. So those are all the bad things about it. But here are the great things about it. It. The action is fantastic. If you ask me, it's better than the action in the first one. The plot, for the most part, makes sense, and they don't feel the need to write in a bunch of shit so they can have a fight scene at the end. The ending doesn't feel tacked on at all. It, it, it makes sense. The dialogue is really great once again, and so is the editing. These actors just have such great chemistry, and Jon Favreau is such a good director that he knows how to make these scenes effective. He knows how to make scenes of two people talking and giving exposition really entertaining. It doesn't feel like actors reading a script, it feels like actors improvising. And I wouldn't be surprised if these scenes are improvised. That's how natural they feel. There is a good hour and a half movie buried in here somewhere, but the movie is just too long and there's too much shit happening. If this movie were shorter, it would be as good as the first one, but it's not. And if you ask me, it's the weakest Iron Man movie in the series. And after seeing Iron Man 2, I was like, yeah, that was entertaining, but I wasn't really looking forward to an Iron Man 3. So, Thor came out. It's a movie about Thor. Um, it's got, it's got some good direction and some good performances. And as I said before, it's pretty funny. I need a horse! We don't have horses, just dogs, cats, birds. And hey, give me one of those large enough to ride. The movie doesn't take itself that seriously. And when it does, it doesn't really work. Loki's in it, but he's not really like, you know, crazy funny Loki yet. This is before he was able to shine in the Avengers movie. He's fine in it, but he's not the Loki we've all come to love. Really, this movie's just fine. It's not that it's bad, it's just that it's bland. I mean, the beginning was kind of good, but then we got to Earth, and I don't know, Thor has to fit in. It's, it's like a... It's like a romance. It's not bad, it's just bland. I can't even talk about it. That's how bland it is. From the first 10 minutes, you know exactly what's gonna happen. All that shit happens, you get some action, you get some good effects, and then you go home. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just okay. I think the main reason people like this movie is because Chris Hemsworth is in it. And he takes his shirt off. I mean, good for you if you like that kind of thing. I don't. Where was Natalie Portman in a thong? What am I supposed to get out of this? I'll give Thor this. It's better than Captain America. Uh, but you hate Captain America too? You hate everything. No, shut the hell up. Let me talk. Captain America's fine. That's all it is. Fine. It's not as fine as Thor, but it's finer than the Incredible Hulk. It's just fine, all right? Shut up and let me talk. The first 40 minutes of Captain America, maybe even the first hour. Basically, when he's weak Steve Rogers, that's when the movie is great. The direction and the sets are really nice. The way the movie is shot and acted is really great. The effects are amazing. They had to composite Chris Evans' face onto a weaker guy's body 
and it looks so good. It looked natural, and it never took me out of the movie. Tommy Lee Jones is very entertaining and very funny. The origin story of Captain America is really well done, but then, once Captain America becomes Captain America, the movie's boring. Alright, now you're watching a perfect superhero, perfect charismatic guy, who's super strong, can't die, and you're watching him fight Nazis with laser guns. The first hour of this movie is very traditionally shot, and I love that! There aren't many special effects effects, and if there are, they look real enough that it isn't distracting. At the end of the movie, everything looks like shit. Everything looks like it's computer animated, and it completely takes you out of the movie. Seeing a World War II movie with a bunch of laser guns and cheap CGI effects, it's just horrible. This is when the movie loses any sense of pacing or fun. It's just one scene after another of Captain America fighting dudes, and it looks fake. The movie has a really good pace for the first hour, as we see Steve Rogers grow as a character. We see all these people who doubt him and underestimate him, and then he proves them all wrong. It's truly inspiring or whatever. But then all of a sudden it's just action scene after action scene, and then the movie's over all of a sudden. And you're like, what the hell happened? This is an issue that was fixed in Captain America the Winter Soldier but I guess I'll talk about that later. As for this Captain America movie, yeah, you gotta watch it if you wanna see the Avengers. You gotta know what happened and how Captain America got started. So here's what you do. You watch the first 40 to 50 minutes of the movie, and then when Steve Rogers becomes Captain America, you shut the movie off and go masturbate to Natalie Portman in the thong. <laughs> Holy shit, this is it. This is it. Y'all ready for this? It's the Avengers! The Avengers came out and everyone was like, holy shit, the Avengers is here. And it made like six billion dollars and everyone loved it. But what do I think of it? That's the question. You guys know I have no problem with going against the popular opinion. And I have no problem shitting on comic book fans. So do I think the Avengers is good? No. I think the Avengers is great. The Avengers is amazing. People need to stop complaining about how the plot is dumb, and they need to stop nitpicking shit. This is a perfect example of how to do a summer movie. It's funny, the banter is great, the action is great, all of the characters are fully fleshed out and interesting. It's just... I have care how you speak. Loki is beyond reason, but he is of Asgard, and he is my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. Perfect. The reason this movie works is not because, uh... Thor is in it. The reason this movie works is because it's really funny. Joss Whedon knows all this comic book stuff is dumb, so don't play it up to be serious. Can I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. Play it up to be funny. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. It's the exact opposite of a movie like The Dark Knight, which is totally fine. Batman is a very realistic character, and thus his film series should be set in a realistic world. When you have a god, a green man, and a guy in a robot suit all fighting off aliens, don't play it up to be serious. I'm pretty sure all of you have seen Avengers, and I don't think anyone walked out unsatisfied. Unlike girls who walk out of my bedroom, who are always unsatisfied. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm a virgin. I'm so lonely. I just sit in my basement and talk about movies all day. If anyone's interested, you can find me on spark.com. My username's CaptainSassy69. Oh, sorry, we got off track. There are some problems. One problem is that the first five minutes aren't all that great. And I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Kind of like at the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh shit, we didn't get to that yet. But yeah, the first five minutes were weak, but once the movie got started, it got pretty good. And another thing wrong with it is it's not the kind of movie that you could re-watch. I mean, once you've seen it once, you know all the jokes. And so you kind of stop laughing and you just start paying attention to the story and the subtleties. And the problem is the movie doesn't have a good story or any subtleties of any kind. It's just a comedy, and once you know the jokes, the comedy isn't funny anymore. And it's not like an Edgar Wright comedy, because I sat through Scott Pilgrim vs. The World about 22 times, and every single time I watch it, it's funny, because there's something new that I didn't notice. Avengers isn't like that. Once you've seen it twice, you're just kind of done with it. A masterpiece in my mind is something that you can sit through multiple times and still enjoy it as much. There are some movies that are even better the more times you watch them. Avengers isn't one of those movies, but those those are like nothing complaints. I still highly recommend this movie. 
So, Iron Man 3 came out, and after Iron Man 2, I wasn't really looking forward to Iron Man 3. Plus, the trailer looked all dark and gritty. Some people call me a terrorist. I consider myself a teacher. Which is not why I want to go see an Iron Man movie. But hey, what do you know? Marketing lied to me. Trailers have never done that before. They'd reject me. He was convinced that the world wasn't ready. Yeah, the trailers to this movie made it look a bit more dramatic than it actually is. Iron Man 3 is pretty goddamn good. And there are a lot of people who agree with me, but there are also a lot of people who strongly disagree with me. And I'm going to carefully explain why I am right and you are wrong. The first complaint lots of people have with this movie is it is not accurate to the comics. In which case, please shut up. I've said this multiple times. I do not care what's in the comic. I could care less. But the Mandarin in the comic isn't the- I don't care. There's a twist about halfway through with the Mandarin where he's revealed to actually be an actor who's pretending to be the Mandarin just to scare people. And while half of the audience went, uh, it's not the real Mandarin. It's not like in the comic book. In the comic- Shut up. To me, it was a really clever twist and it made me laugh really hard. I thoroughly enjoyed that scene, and Ben Kingsley pulled it off perfectly. The Mandarin is in the movie, it's just played by Guy Pierce, and he isn't exactly as cartoonish as the Ben Kingsley Mandarin, but he's still the Mandarin, so I don't see why you're complaining. The Mandarin's in the movie. God forbid a movie has an actual twist and defies your expectations. Do these comic book fans seriously want to walk into the movie and know what's going to happen? I'm not saying that all these comic book fans want a predictable story, but but most of them do. They want to know exactly what's going to happen. And if they change up anything from the comic books, then the comic book fans get angry. Let the directors and writers do what they want. Get over yourself. If you've just seen Iron Man 3, can you imagine what the Avengers 2 is going to be like? They might have whales flying around with lasers attached to their heads for all we know, all right? We don't know what the fuck Disney's going to do. The, I think the worst part about Iron Man 3 was the fact was it was too gimmicky, it was too funny, it had... People that were on fire that can rejuvenate? What the fuck? What is that shit? I, 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 I felt like I felt like they were they were like ripping off Wolverine now because that's his. Yeah, power. not not just Wolverine, but Terminator also. I felt that they had infringed on Terminator. And it's half of those scenes where they're walking out of the fireball. What was it with Pepper and uh, that one dude who comes out of the fire? T one thousand or Terminator from episode from uh, Judgment Day. If I was James Cameron, I'd be suing those fuckers right now. Two, Iron Man isn't in it enough. Shut up. These are the same goddamn people who complained about how Batman wasn't in The Dark Knight Rises enough. That movie was worse than Batman The Dark Knight Rises, all right? And that's saying something, because The Dark Knight Rises was an absolute abortion. You know the movie is about Tony Stark, right? And his struggle. He's the character here. Iron Man isn't a character. Iron Man is a suit. Tony Stark is the interesting one. I'd much rather have a whole movie about Tony Stark than a whole movie about Iron Man. You get enough Iron Man in this movie. There's a few fight scenes with Iron Man, and at the end, a thousand Iron Man suits come out and fight the Mandarin. That isn't enough Iron Man for you? I personally like that Iron Man isn't in the whole movie. He's in it a couple times. So the times where Iron Man does come out, the audience gets excited, because there's some build up to it. I enjoy the variety of action in this movie. There isn't just Iron Man action, there's shootouts and stuff. All kinds of really creative, really cool stuff that we usually don't get in movies like this. But it's not accurate to the comic. Three, Iron Man retires at the end. People got upset because Iron Man retires. He takes that energy orb or whatever it's called out of his chest and he doesn't have to be Iron Man anymore. He wants to live happily with Pepper Potts or whatever. And these dummies got upset. Do you really think Iron Man retired? Do you think he's not going to show up in the next Avengers movie? Do you think like this is it for Iron Man? He'll come back. And even if he didn't, so what? What else are they gonna do with Iron Man? There's three movies about him. How many times can you see the same guy do the same shit? I like this movie much better than Iron Man 2, because Iron Man 2 is basically a copy of Iron Man 1, with some product placement in it. Now, I'm not saying this movie doesn't have some product placement, but at least it's original and new and creative. Stop taking points off for creativity. But in the comic books, Iron Man didn't retire. 4. The plot. People love to complain 
complain about the plot holes in this movie? Why did Pepper go to the edge of the house while it was collapsing? Why did Tony Stark give out his address on television? Is he that stupid? And why didn't he prepare for the terrorists to attack after he gave out his address on television? If Tony had an arsenal of robots at his house, why didn't he call on them when he was stuck in Tennessee? Why didn't S.H.I.E.L.D. or any of the Avengers help Iron Man? You wanna know the answer? Who cares? The whole plot was him getting back at Tony it's... for not meeting him on the roof. Uh, I know, you're like, it's the you're hangover like super, super, super superhero version. I've sat through every one of these Marvel movies and all of them have plot holes. Are you really complaining now about plot holes? All of them have plot holes. Now, I'm not giving the plot holes a pass because if this movie did have a tighter script, it would be a much better movie. But does having plot holes really take anything away as long as the movie's fun? It's an entertaining movie with good dialogue and banter and some cool action. I don't give a shit if there's some plot holes. Holes? The kid. Now in any other movie, I would agree with you. They always try to throw in a kid's sidekick so that kids can relate to the movie. Was a kid necessary? Not really. Did Disney force Marvel Studios to throw a kid in there? Probably. But is the kid bad? No, not at all. Again, what I love about these Iron Man movies is they avoid cliches. So now you're just gonna leave me here like my dad? That's great, so I don't really see the problem. I don't know if I'd go out and buy an action figure of this kid, but throwing him in the movie for about 20 minutes isn't bad at all. It doesn't tie into the Avengers universe. A big complaint I've heard from a lot of these fanboys is that it doesn't tie into the universe very well. Along with S.H.I.E.L.D. not helping at all, this movie doesn't add anything to the universe. In each of these movies, something big happens like, I don't know, Captain America destroys S.H.I.E.L.D. or Loki becomes King of Asgard or something. But in this movie, nothing happens apparently. All the comic book fans just went, Iron Man is the same Iron Man, and nothing really is accomplished in this film. Apparently they forgot about the whole thing like, Iron Man's house was destroyed, and then Pepper Potts got superpowers, and then Iron Man got rid of the thing in his chest, and he destroyed all his suits. Apparently they forgot about all that, because that doesn't affect the universe at all. The fact that Tony Stark doesn't want to be Iron Man anymore, that doesn't affect the universe at all, right? Bunch of dumb shit. I know I'm gonna sound like kind of a hypocrite saying this, but can't you just sit down and enjoy the goddamn movie? Iron Man 2 blows the hell out of Iron Man 3. The armor in Iron Man 2? He carried that shit around in a briefcase. That was awesome. It was believable. His armor is powered by that shit in his chest. So how are these individual pieces flying hundreds of miles, homing in on him, what are they powered by? And then when he crash landed, his suit was out of power? I mean, I've got a couple different remotes in my house. The batteries don't all die at the same time. It would have been cool if they had kept the Mandarin the Mandarin. Meaning, you know, instead of the dude with the glowing hand. How do you look at me? My, my friggin' hands glow in the dark. I'm, I'm, what is that? What is that? When I watch movies like this, I don't nitpick. I just want them to entertain me. Where nitpicking comes from is when the movie isn't entertaining you. If you sit down in the theater and are engaged in what's happening, and if you're entertained and you laugh consistently, then you just pay attention to the film and you don't look for problems with it. When I start to look for problems is when the movie isn't entertaining or interesting. When I'm not engaged in the story, what else am I supposed to do in the movie? Just sit down and be bored? No, this movie isn't bad at all. I don't think it's a perfect movie or anything, but it's fine for what it is. Iron Man 3. All these great reviews it's getting from these critics. And for the most part, I would say 75% of everybody, everyone that watched it, did not like the movie. They didn't give it these glowing reviews that critics seem to be giving the movie. All this adds up to me, it's, it's pretty simple. I believe they have been paying off reviewers to give this movie a good, good score. It makes sense. And it's certainly better than Thor The Dark World. Thor The Dark World stinks. I think the movie looks pretty good, but in terms of story, oh, it's dreadful. And the comedy, holy shit, the comedy is off. Kat Dennings, I think her name is, is the most irritating thing in a film since Jar Jar Binks. People complained about the kid from Iron Man 3? Kat Dennings is much more irritating than that kid. Kat Dennings is much more irritating than herpes. The only times this movie works is when Loki's on the screen. He knows he's in a stupid movie and he just has fun. When him and Thor are playing off each other, the movie's entertaining. This is a tremendous idea. 
Let's steal the biggest, most obvious ship in the universe and escape in that. Flying around the city, smashing into everything in sight so everyone can see us. It's brilliant, Thor! It's truly brilliant! <laughs> But when Thor's alone, or with Natalie Portman, who just stands there, it's so boring. The plot doesn't make any sense. The villain is bland. When you aren't entertained on any level, little shit just starts to piss you off, like this. How can Thor hang his hammer on the coat hanger? Isn't his hammer like 10 million tons or something? It should fall through the floor. It's not something you can hang on a coat rack. It isn't terrible, and it's still more entertaining than other Avengers movies like the Hulk, but I would never sit through it again. It's just something you gotta watch to keep track of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But once you watch it once and you get the point of it, then there's no reason to ever watch it again. Time to go, lots to do. This was a good year for Marvel. First off, we had Captain America. This movie is awesome. This isn't really that much of a superhero movie. It's basically a spy movie with some goofy stuff in there, which I don't mind at all because the movie manages to be really, really entertaining. Unlike that last Captain America movie in which Captain America just did things and he was boring. In this movie, Captain America has a lot to work with. The Winter Soldier is cool and he gets to play off of him. He gets to play off of Scarlett Johansson, which is great. He gets to play off of Nick Fury, which is great. He gets to play off of Hawk. Guy, Birdman, Black Man with Wings, Falcon, Hawk, whatever this guy's name is. He gets to play off of him. And it just makes the movie very entertaining. It's really funny, it's really smart, the action is really good, and it's freaking brutal. Captain America brutally murders people, and I love that. Since this is a newer movie and not all of you have seen it, I'm just gonna say I highly recommend it. It's up there with some of the best, like Spider-Man 2 and Iron Man. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey! That's mine! You son of a bitch! Hey! Take those headphones off! Right now! This is the big one. Guardians of the Galaxy, directed by James Gunn, who is freaking amazing. Now, as much as I liked a lot of these Marvel movies, they got kind of old after a while. They were all basically the same. They follow that same structure. They're always about big, strong, heroic men who are really cunning and near perfect in every way. So when I saw a trailer for this... They call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of a-holes. I was pleasantly surprised. It looked so weird and so not epic that I couldn't wait to see it. It did not look like it followed the formula, really. And after watching the movie, it doesn't really feel like a Marvel movie. Now that isn't really a complaint, but it's just something I noticed. This is a pretty good movie. The cast has great chemistry with each other, which is kind of shocking, because two out of the five members of the Guardians of the Galaxy are all CGI, and one of them has one line of dialogue. It's a really funny movie, it's very creative, the effects are great, and the Guardians of the Galaxy themselves are really cool. I'm sure you've all heard nothing but great things about this movie. And if you've seen it yourself, then you know it's pretty good. And don't get me wrong, I do like this movie, but would I consider it one of the best Marvel movies? Mm, don't get me wrong, it's still a very good movie, but I have some problems with it. And I can't even say they're like, legit problems. There's just stuff in it that doesn't work for me. Like all the names. The names of the planets, the names of the ships, the names of the characters. It just doesn't work for me. You know, like Klaatu was from Batu, and he has to go to Noctu to save Gyaktu. Then he goes back to Xandar to rescue Gandar. And Xandar and Katu gotta go fight the Kaiju. Lots of dumb names like that that I just... I, I, I just don't like that. And I don't like the look of the aliens. Like, some of them look cool, but some of them are just painted blue and red. And I don't, I don't really like that. This movie really suffers from a weak villain. If it had a villain like Loki, then this movie would be fantastic. But the villain is just very bland and generic. Standard, uh, I'm a bad guy, murderous type kind of bad guy. Not anything special. In some ways, that could be considered a good thing, because it gives us more time to develop the Guardians of the Galaxy. But making the villain just like something a little more interesting would have made this movie much better and I don't like the beginning I thought I was in the wrong theater for a second this scene is very ham-fisted and corny and I started getting worried like oh god I hope the whole movie isn't like this but it got better even though I have problems with it 
it's still a really good movie. I still recommend it. The characters are really good. All they need is a better story and a better villain. Then the next Guardians of the Galaxy could be an absolute masterpiece. So now that I'm done talking about the Avengers movies, both Phase 1 and Phase 2, I would like to ask, what the fuck is this Avengers movie gonna be about? Loki is the king of Asgard, Tony Stark isn't Iron Man anymore, S.H.I.E.L.D. is destroyed, the Winter Soldier is out there and Captain America's trying to find him, Thanos is gonna be the bad guy in it, Ultron is gonna be the bad guy in it, apparently, cause he's in the title of the movie, some guy named The Vision is gonna be in it, Ant-Man is gonna be in it, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are gonna be in it too? Not the Quicksilver from X-Men Days of Future Past, another Quicksilver, set in a different universe. How are they gonna fit all this shit? into one movie. No matter what they decide to do, I have complete confidence in Marvel and Joss Sweden. They've been pretty good up to this point, so I think they'll do fine. I think that Marvel is something special. We've never seen this done in film history. A series of films that all connect with each other. These films are epic in scale. They cover so much. They are all connected, but at the same time, they are very loosely connected. So this gives the filmmakers and the writers and the actors complete freedom to do what they want to do with the film. And they appeal to millions and millions of men, women, and children all over the world. So I may not know what's going to happen in this new Avengers movie, but I do know this. Batman vs. Superman's gonna fucking suck. I'm put down